Hello everybody and welcome to Saturday. I am the Forsaken Scribe and today, instead of doing a reaction video, I'm going to be reading some of my saddest content. You know, like I do every weekend. Well, actually, this isn't going to be from any of the books that I've published, though those are nice. Instead, these are some works that maybe some of you haven't seen yet, or have only ever seen if you'd actually known me. Because these were ones that I haven't released yet in any capacity. Some for good reason, some, well, still compiling them into a book, perhaps. Or trying to figure out um, what to do with half of them. So, without further ado, I'll get started with Cutting Edge by the Forsaken Scribe. Now, I should warn you before I do this one, if you are prone to cutting yourself, or know somebody who is, or would otherwise be offended by this particular one, let me just be the one to warn you, yeah, this, this is kind of one of those things where I've never actually done it myself, but... I kind of wanted to write one from the perspective of maybe somebody who had, based off of what I've heard of it. So, here goes nothing. Carve one tally mark for every friend I don't have. Carve one tally mark for every drink I must consume to enjoy even momentary happiness. Carve one tally mark for every year I've told myself things would be better, but they got worse instead. Carve one tally mark for every relationship that didn't work. Carve one tally mark for every project I left unfinished. If I did it correctly, I'm dead. So yeah, that's a good way to start. <laughs> now for something maybe a little less serious. Light of the night. Out the window, into the black. Moonlight a crescendo. Some taken aback. Onspiring illumination amid the darkness. Children tiring. My shadow-like light's darkness. Sounds of creatures nocturnal, smell of seasons. Hope for tomorrow eternal, we have our reasons. To let all be as it should, upon our bed, sleep we could, even after we've said, wake we would. The cycle begins anew, until our lives are through. And here's another one. This time we're, we're taking the perspective of someone who is contemplating whether they should live on or not. This is for all the people who have ever unfortunately met their end. I'm sorry that um, you felt that was... I'm sorry that you did that to your... that you um, died. I'm sorry that um, this world couldn't bring you comfort when you needed it. Without further ado, this poem's for you. Death. It is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. The problems don't seem temporary. If they just had support, they would see life as too precious to waste. Their life was already a waste. A cure could eventually be found. Easy to say when, when the disease isn't causing you excruciating pain even with treatment. They could have been something. They couldn't handle the demands of, of that something and agonized over the opportunities they squandered before they died. If they just worked harder, they'd get what they deserve. Working in a dead-end job won't get you by anymore. Give it a few years, things will be better. Mystical thinking like that just leads to further disappointment. You're so smart, you could be doing so much more. Are you hiring? I don't. I didn't think so. You're overqualified for your job. You don't just get the job you're qualified for out of university. If you didn't spend so much on... Insert a luxury item here. You could move out. Luxury item is my only source of comfort in times of hopelessness and increasingly out of reach market. If you just got out more, you'd feel better. I don't have time, and when I do, I have little energy. To, I have little to say or energy to do what you're passionate about. Unless I'm passionate about work no one else wants to do, I'm not going to make a living off of it. You can make a new addition. I keep fixing what isn't broken and. In, become increasingly less satisfied with the end product. I feel like I scammed those that have the original. 
There's so much to live for. And so much to be a slave to the almighty dollar for. But you're so much better off than, gee, thanks for leaving me feeling guilty for having problems and emotions. You only have so much time to be alive and eternity to be dead. If I'm not enjoying life, am I really alive? Give me liberty or give me death. Liberty is a lie. Even in a state of anarchy, free will is questionable. You choose to feel and act this way. No, I don't, any more than you choose to cry when you'd rather not embarrass yourself at a funeral. Wouldn't you rather just be happy with what you have? Show me how. Oh, wait, you probably don't know either. That last statement didn't reach me. I am dead. <sighs> now, for that particular one, you know, I, I was kind of in a moment where I'm like, you know what? Man, stuff seems so deadened now, and, you know, if I were someone else that was actually planning something like this, what would be my thoughts? What would, what would I be arguing with myself about, or others, perhaps? And that was what kind of made that sort of poem passage, you know, argument sort of thing. And... If it's any relief to anyone, I'm not actually planning something like that, um, but at the same time, those are the kinds of thoughts that go around one's head when they're contemplating the end. And so my next one is called Passion and Profit. This one's a little bit different. It's, it's more kind of a, well, shoot, you know, I... I've done so much with my life, but what has it amounted to? Lost and confused, an author believes the reviews. A darkness will rise. His works unfit, they surmise. Other pursuits consume his time. We all must earn a dime. An emptiness inside. Life is a bumpy ride. Highs and lows, columns and rows. Lacking in soul, the profit is null. A mind is a prison. Circumstances have risen. Lacking fulfillment, he toils as his blood boils. It must come out, and so he will shout, I quit. He's not a git. We all break. Let's all make the most of each day and live it our way. And this next one is a is one called I Will Go On. Wandering this land seems like everyone but me knows where they're going. Happily, they make of life what they can, but are they faking it? Or do they know that happiness is fleeting? Dead is my spirit, alive is my body. Where do I fit in it all? I will go on until my pur until I find my purpose, a reason for being. I will go on until all is gone from me, rested in peace or eternal misery. Abandoned body, soul is gone away. No one came to say goodbye. They all died before me. Wandering still until I am at peace. My life will rerun again. My life will rerun again. I can't help thinking I probably intended that to be a song at some point, but I can't remember to what melody I intended that. And now this following passage is going to be something that I wrote to a future son or daughter. I'm going to presume in this for simplicity that it's probably a son because I'd probably be a little more likely to advise them of this type of thing than maybe a daughter. And... Um, these are basically guidelines for, you know, how to survive public school, you know, not make the same mistakes I did. And, you know, it may be out of date because things have, I think, changed, but maybe not. And I wrote it like this. Son, this may be hard to grasp, but the sooner accepted it as the truth, the easier it will be to face the trials that lie ahead. I will not, not go into detail the crud the human race did to me, but this advice should help you all the same. If all these rules and maybe just maybe the other kids will leave you alone. One, do not give your name no matter what. I have told your teachers why. Two, do not ever play with other kids because it will give them an outlet to break you down. Three, do not try to get good grades, but don't let yourself fail either. You want to neither be the smart nor the dumb kid. Four, do not speak to anyone. The silence will scare them into submission. Five, do not participate in any activities unrelated to what you need to pass your classes. Six, make sure you aren't the favorite of the teacher. Seven, never ask questions. 
Eight, if you have to speak, only say what you need to say. Nine, come home and report to me if anyone gives you trouble so I can take matters into my own hands. And number ten, trust no one. And yeah, that's pretty much the guidelines from what I had learned of life, you know, when I was in school. Now for something that's maybe a little more lighthearted, but still kind of negative all the same. I'm sure some of you are familiar with Country Roads. And, um, you know, the country roads take me home to the place I don't belong by John Denver. Well, I did a parody of that. I, I don't have a ukulele or strumming instrument, so you're just going to have to kind of hear the a cappella and then either play guitar yourself or listen to a little bit of it in the background or just imagine it in your head. However, whatever works. Almost hell. West Covina. Red Ridge Valleys, Covina Sewer, Death is New There, newer, newer than the trees, newer than the valleys, visible like the trees, city roads, don't take me home to the place I don't belong, West Covina. Valley Papa, don't take me home, city roads, all my memories gather round him, modest gentleman, familiar to red sand, bright and shiny, written in the sky, bright smell of sunshine, Anger in my eye, city roads, don't take me home to the place I don't belong, West Covina, Valley Papa, don't take me home, city roads. I see his face in the evening, and he beckons me, TV reminds me. Of my home nearby, driving up the road, I get a feeling this should have been home today. Today, city roads don't take me home to the place I don't belong. West Covina, Valley Papa, don't take me home. City roads. City roads, don't take me home to the place I don't belong. West Covina, Valley Papa, don't take me home. City roads, don't take me home. Up city roads, don't take me home. Don't take me home. Up city roads. And by the way, if you have the right audience, you can also exchange Valley Papa with Valley Popeyes. But, um, yeah, decided not to do it for this particular crowd, you know, albeit small. <sighs> anyway, let's see. And for our last piece in this otherwise um, pretty short episode, because frankly I'm kind of tired and, uh, like three in the morning or so, give or take. This one's called Drunk Poem. This is one I actually wrote one time when I was at a um, bar slash nightclub, and I just, I was un a little bit under the influence, and I said, you know what, I wonder what I'll write if I'm in this state of mind. So it went like this, sitting in a bar, friends nowhere to be found, watching others from afar, here sits a man on a mound, Nothing left to lose, drinking since the night began, south of Santa Cruz. What is his lifespan? Eighty-five years unless he is dumb. So he sits watching from a stool. What is life without fun? When he wakes up tomorrow, he might drool. All will cease for another thirty days. On and on, he will continue the pace. Then again, who could understand his ways? His friends tell him it's not a race. Nine in, no more left to go. He will never win. Why can't he say no? 
All he wants is happiness, a hunger huge and great. He is quite ravenous. He doesn't want a mate. Staggering, he enters his house, proceeding to bed. Quiet as a mouse, the cycle continues until he is dead. Oh, oh. And that was our uh, last um, writing, poem, etc. for the night. I thank you kindly and uh, sweet dreams, and I hope this was entertaining for you, even if it didn't maybe make you cry or not. <laughs> Thank you, and until next time, this is the Forsaken Scribe out, and this has been Saturdays. See the description for anything you might need to know. Bye-bye.